Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video I'm going to explain the group by clause and aggregate functions in SQL. Let's begin with aggregate functions. Aggregate functions are functions that return to you one value when you pass as an input several values. So for example, functions like average and um, min minimum and maximum um, sum count, all these functions are aggregate functions and they are built in inside SQL. So you can use them directly and we're going to see those with some examples. So find the average salary for all employees and you can write it in this way, select AVG in bracket salary from employees and it gives you 52,500 as the average salary of all the employees combined. And this is the original employees table that we have created and you can go ahead and verify the average if it is the same or not. Let's move on to the next query. This is find the minimum and maximum project revenue for all active projects that make money. This can be written in this manner. Select and we want the minimum revenue. So the function is min in bracket revenue and we want maximum revenue. So the function is max bracket revenue from projects it also says that projects should be active projects. Active projects are projects that have a stop date null. So that means they haven't finished yet. So we are adding that where stop date is null. And it also says they should be making money, which means the revenue generated by them should be greater than zero. And when you do that, this is the result you get. Now let's verify the result. So for, uh, first of all, this is the projects table and there are only three projects that have a null stop date. So you do not have to consider the second project at all. Then the first project is having a revenue zero. So we don't consider that either. And so only two projects are left. And from there, the minimum revenue is this 18150 and the maximum revenue is 242,000. And that's what we got as a result of our query right here. Now let's see another query. Find the number of projects that are completed. You may not use a where clause and uh, because it's very easy to do it with a where clause, you just have to do where stop date is null. Uh, or not now because we won't complete it. So just like last time we did stop date is null, here we just have to write stop date is not null and we get all the projects that are completed. But we have been asked not to use the where clause. So this can be done using the count keyword, which is an aggregate function in SQL. And it counts the values from a particular column and only those values which are not null. So I'm simply counting the stop date column from projects table and it returns to me one. And why it is one? Because in the projects table, there is only one project that has a stop date. Others are null, which means they are still going on. Only one project has completed. Let's see the next query. Find the number of projects that have been worked on or currently are being worked on by an employee. This will be using the works on table that we had created earlier. And you can do it in this manner. Select count in bracket distinct in bracket project ID from works on. It's very easy, but uh, you might be thinking why we are using the distinct keyword. And uh, remember the result is three and I'll tell you why we use distinct. So this is the works on table, the original one. And you can see that all the project IDs mentioned here are the projects that are being worked on right now. And in this, there are all these project IDs, but 
you can see that robo SPSE is coming three times and ADT4 MFI is coming twice. So you cannot actually say that there are six projects being worked on. There are actually only three. But if you perform the count query without distinct, it will give you three because it simply counts the not null values. So in order to make it count only distinct values, you have to use the distinct keyword as it is used here. The next query is find the last name of the employee whose last name is last in dictionary order. And this might look a little confusing, but it's very easy to do. And an interesting use of the maximum or the max function, max aggregate function in SQL. So it's very easy. Select max last name from employees. Now max is not just used with numbers. It can be used with strings also. So it is asking you the last name in dictionary order and dictionary order is the ascending alphabetical order in that the last name would mean the last name of the person uh, whose first letter should be last in dictionary order so it's very easy you just have to write down select max last name from employees and you get software let's go and verify this so this is the employees table and if you check all the last names yes software is the one that would appear last in dictionary order. Since we've covered all the aggregate functions now, let's go and check the group by clause, which can be used with aggregate functions and a very strong clause available in SQL. For each department, list the department code and the number of employees in the department. And let's see the query. This is how you do it. Select debt code, comma, count employee ID. So we are counting the employees here from employees. And at this point, if you put a semicolon here, it's going to give you an error. You have to add a group by clause. Now this query is not simply asking you to count number of employees. It is asking you to count number of employees in each department which is why we have included the depth code column. And then we are using the group by clause to uh, group everything using the depth code. So this is your result. You can see it says that in admin, there is one employee. In CNSLT department, there, is, there are two employees. In ACCNT, there is one. And there's one employee that is not assigned to any department. And then in the hardware department, there's one employee. So this is the result when you use the group by laws. And you can see that these, this is my employees table and it's uh, very easy to verify from this table the result that we got in the previous query. Let's see the next query. For each department that has a project, list the department code and report the average revenue and count of all of its projects. So let's see it. This is the example query that I've written. Uh, this is slightly longer because it's asking for a lot of things, but it's uh, asking you that you want these things for every department. That's why we've included depth code. Then it's asking, for the average revenue. So we are using the AVG aggregate function. It's asking for how many projects are there. So we are using the count function. We are counting the project IDs. All this is taken from the projects table. And once again, we want the data department wise, which is why we are writing group by depth code. And this is the result you get. It says admin is having an average revenue of zero and only one project. CNSLT has this much average revenue and two projects, and ACCNT has 100,000 revenue and one project. And all this can be, of course, verified from the table here. You can see admin is having a zero revenue, only one project. CNSLT is having two projects. So obviously, the average of these two will be the average revenue. And ACCNT is having only one project, so average is simply 100,000 as we saw in the query. Now 
Now let's see a slightly more complicated query. It says modify the previous query to only include departments with two or more projects. Remember that last time we got three, uh, three uh, results. And this time it says only those departments with two or more projects. So it's the same query we wrote up to here. It's the same, but afterwards I have written having count of project ID greater than or equal to two. Now, the reason why we are using this keyword called having is because it can be used with group by. So whenever you're using a group by clause, you can add this keyword having with it and it would allow you to um, use one of these columns so the columns that you have are debt code average revenue and count project id these are the three columns that will be displayed and if you would want to use the debt code column to apply a condition then you can use the where clause but if you want to use the these two columns where you have applied some aggregate function then you will have to use the having clause in order to apply a condition. So we want the condition that the number of projects assigned to that department should be two or more. So that's why we are using the having clause where we are repeating this count project ID and then writing greater than or equal to two. And we get only one department because that's the, that's the only one that has projects more than uh, or uh, equal to or more than two. And you can see that right here that this is the project C, uh, this is the department CNSLT, which is coming twice. So that's the only department having two projects. The others do not have two projects or even more than two projects. So that's why only one is uh, created here. And you can go ahead and try it on your own. And now for our last query, it is modify the previous query to count only active projects. So now we have one more extra thing in the previous query. And then it says sort the results in, in descending order by count. Now let's see how you can do that. So you can see here the query, this part is the same. Select depth code, average revenue, and count project ID from projects. It is the same as the previous query. Now, the next thing we need to do is count only active projects. And we know what active projects are. Active projects are projects that have a stop date, which is null. So that's why there's a clause here where stop date is null. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't I use having stop date null? Because here, stop date is not given to you here. When you are using the select query, you have not selected the stop date column because you were not asked to display the stop date. So if the column name is not present in select, then you have to use the where clause to apply the condition. And that's why we are using where stop date is null. Now, as, as it was in the previous query, we are including group by depth code having count project ID greater than or equal to two. That is the same as the previous query, but we also need to add this thing that says the results should be in descending order of count. So that's why we are using the order by clause, which we learned in the previous video. And we are going to use this column called count project ID. And last time in the previous video, I told you that if you wanted to sort in descending order, you could use the keyword DESC because by default, these things are sorted in ascending order. So that's why we have added this keyword DESC over here for descending. And I'm getting this result. Now in the previous query also, I got only one row. So actually there's no meaning of sorting, but this is a very good question. Now in this question, you can clearly see the order in which things are mentioned. So always remember that first comes select, then comes the where clause, then comes the group by clause, and then comes the order by clause. If you interchange this order, so for example, if you write down group by, if you write down line three before line two, then it would give you an error. If you try to write down 
order by buffer group by, it will give you an error. So this is the preferred order in SQL that works without any errors. And you can go ahead and try it out. And please check the document with the queries used in this video. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.